If we have something like 5 over the square root of 3 minus the square root of 2, okay? So taking it a step beyond what we did yesterday, just a little reminder yesterday, there was only a single term in the denominator. So what happens if we throw another term in there with a plus or a minus, okay? Now, they don't necessarily both have to be square roots. Sometimes they're both square roots. The next example we're getting ready to do, one of them is a square root, one of them is not, okay? But if there is a plus or minus in that denominator and one of those terms is a square root, we still don't want to leave that square root in the denominator. So here is how we rationalize problems like this. Now, what conjugate means, if you have not heard that word before, that means you have the same terms but the opposite sign in between. So the conjugate of square root of 3 minus the square root of 2 is the square root of 3 plus the square root of 2. Okay, we don't change the sign on the square root of 3, we only change the sign in the middle. And remember, if we multiply the denominator, we also need to multiply the numerator, so we're keeping things balanced. Really, that's like multiplying by 1, but it's 1 in a different form that helps us out. Now, I'm not going to multiply the numerator out yet. I'm going to leave it as it is for the moment until I see what I end up with in the denominator. Now, this is why we multiplied those binomials the other day. Um, we wanted to practice with this. You need a FOIL, so the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. The outside gives us positive square root of 6. The inside gives us negative square root of 6. And the last, positive times a negative is a negative. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. So, the positive square root of 6 and the negative square root of 6 cancel each other out. That will happen every time. That's the purpose of multiplying by the conjugate. It eliminates the radicals. Okay, the radicals are gone. And so we have 5 times the square root of 3 plus the square root of 2 over 1. Now, it doesn't always equal 1 but there will be no more radical there. Um, so really you don't need to write that over 1. You can write this finally as 5 squared to 3 plus 5 squared to 2. If you leave it in factored form, I'm fine with that as well. Okay, not a big deal if you... Either way, factored form or multiplied out. Fine with it. Okay, let's look at rationalizing 3 over... Negative 1 minus 4 square root of 5. Okay, bless you. So the conjugate is negative 1 plus 4 square root of 5. Again, the first term does not change signs. It's only the sign in between. Because if the first term changes signs too, then your, your radicals don't end up canceling out. Okay, so you got to make sure that you do that. Um, again, I'm going to leave it in factored form, and the reason why I do that is because sometimes that coefficient will simplify with the denominator, and it's easier to see that if you leave it in factored form. Okay, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. The outside gives us negative 4 square roots of 5. The inside gives us positive 4 square roots of 5. And be careful, okay, be careful with this when there are, when there's a coefficient and a term. Negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16 times square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5. Okay, again, still leaving that top in factored form until I simplify the bottom. The 4 square roots of 5 cancel. We've got 1 minus 16 times 5 is um, 80. Is that 80? So 1 minus 80 is, 7, is negative 79.
and I don't think three, I don't think 79 is divisible by three. No. Did y'all know that if for something to be divisible by three, the digits have to add up to be a multiple of three? Well, fun fact, if you didn't know that. So 79 does not, that gives you 16. 16 is not divisible by three. Okay, so that is your final answer. Okay, that is your final answer. Yes. Uh huh. I'm okay with you leaving the answer like that, but on the answer key, I can about guarantee you that your signs are going to be opposite. Because remember yesterday, I think I mentioned don't leave negatives in the denominator. So if you move that to the numerator with the negative 3, or not with the negative 3, to make it negative 3, and then if you distribute that 3, this is more likely what the answer will look like on an answer key. Okay, because when you look at this, if the majority of your signs are negative in a fraction, what they're going to do is they're going to move the negative or kind of factor the negative out uh, and make it so that you have a minimum number of negative signs. So instead of having two out of the three being negative, our final answer only has one out of the three being negative. Okay? Um, so if you're trying to check your answer against the answer key and you have all the right numbers but your signs are just the opposite, you still have the right answer. Okay? It's just that they have factored out a negative to minimize the number of negatives in the answer. So it's the same thing, just slightly different.